Hi, in this video we're going to install RVM on Windows. Start out by going to Windows Settings and typing in Windows Features and pick these Turn Windows Features on or off. Scroll down to the Windows subsystem for Linux and let's install it. RVM lets you install different kinds of rubies which is helpful when you have a Jekyll website that you want to deploy to GitHub or want to use Ruby in some other way. After the Linux installs, the computer will need to restart and then when it comes back, you actually have to pick which kind of Linux you want to put in the subsystem. So you do that by going to the Microsoft Store and do a search for Linux and you can pick any Linux there that you like. I choose Ubuntu because it's the one I'm most familiar with. So you pick that out and then you will add it or get it and then install it. The Microsoft Store will ask you to log in. You can just keep canceling and ignoring that. Once Ubuntu is installed, you can click on launch to fire it up. And now you'll get the Ubuntu bash. Well, it has to install Ubuntu first. So now it's installing Ubuntu. And that takes a little bit of time. So in the meantime, let's install Visual Studio Code, which is a text editor to use for editing and working with your Ruby projects or your Jekyll website. So go to code.visualstudio.com and there you can download Visual Studio Code. Once the download is complete, you can open up the exe file and accept the agreements and accept all the uh, defaults. Now let's go back and see how the Ubuntu install is going. Now it asks you for a username and password. These are for Ubuntu, not for Windows. You can use the Windows username and Windows password that you use, or you can use different ones. It doesn't matter, but they are different. So if you do choose to use different ones, they will. you have to remember that you're using different ones. Now let's install RVM. So the first step here is to go to rvm.io and we're going to copy some code from there. This first line, you want to copy everything after gpg2. So starting with those two dashes. These are keys that help, uh, help authenticate that this code is created by the people that they say it's created by. Now in the bash shell in Ubuntu, you type gpg space and then right click on your mouse to paste in what was there. Now it'll complain the first time, but you just repeat the command and you should see that some keys, that at least one key was imported. Then copy the next command that starts with a backslash and curl and you can go back to the Ubuntu shell and right click and it'll paste in and hit return. This command basically tells the computer to go to the internet, find RVM, and install it. This takes a little bit of time. Then once we're done, you can close the Ubuntu shell and reopen it to prove that RVM has been installed by typing RVM and then return. If the screen floods, you succeeded. The next step is to install the version of Ruby that we want. When I'm creating this, the project that I'm creating it for is using Ruby 2.6.5. So you type in RVM space install space 2.6.5 and hit return. Now this part will really take a long time, but you can't walk away quite just yet because 
it's going to ask you for your Ubuntu password here. So that was the password you set a few minutes ago. Now while we're waiting for this to install, we can open up a second Ubuntu shell and configure Git. For Git, you need to set a global name, which can just be your name, by typing in this command, git config dash dash global user dot name, and then your name in quotes. Then repeat the command, but instead of user dot name, write user dot email, and type your email in between the quotes. Now git is configured, so you can exit out of the shell. And more while we're waiting, eventually it starts to install, and then, or it downloads, then it configures. And let's take a break and do a little bit more work. So now we can open up Visual Studio Code that we just installed and set it up to use the Ubuntu shell as opposed to PowerShell. Now, Visual Studio Code can tell that we're using the Windows subsystem for Linux or the Windows Linux subsystem, and it asks to install that extension. So, that, so just say OK there. And then you can go to the terminal menu and choose new terminal. And you see a shell opens up at the bottom, but it is using PowerShell. So click on the menu and pick select default shell and change it to WSL bash. Now you can close that PowerShell, go back to the terminal menu, choose new terminal, and wait a minute. And you'll see that the shell looks exactly like the Ubuntu shell that's still configuring Ruby. And you can see that Git works. Now we can close Visual Studio Code and wait for Ruby to compile. Once Ruby is done compiling and it gets installed, you can check to make sure that it worked by typing ruby-v and it will say 2.6.5. Then you can exit out, open up Visual Studio Code again, And in the terminal here, you can type ruby space dash v and also see ruby 2.6.5. That's it. Now you have RVM and a new version of Ruby installed.